Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. Well, good morning, everyone. Oh my God, I'm so excited. As you know, um, our Producers Club is one of those that we have put together as a leadership and the executive team uh, to share with you our amazing and talented agents within our sister offices. So today I'm super excited because she's not only an amazing human being, I am very honored to call her a friend, a sister I've never had, but also just an all around great, great individual. Mm -hmm. um, and I cannot wait to share her story because you guys, it is wild. Uh, <laughs> so I would love to introduce you to Nicole Plekovich. Try saying that three times. <laughs> And, good morning. Uh, good morning. And, um, you know, and, and we'll just definitely uh, dive in. But Nicole, thank you so much for getting up this early. You guys heads up, you'll hear baby Olivia chiming in like she's the background dancer. So we're gonna go through this. Okay. Yes. Uh, see? <laughs> yep, we're gonna hear her in the background. She's being good right now. So exactly. Okay, well, let's just launch. You know, and I think it's this is funny because it's always the question. What did you do prior to real estate? <laughs> right. It's so funny to think because like real estate is like my life and like um like beyond just like my job, it's like totally a career and like an obsession. So to think before that, I'm like, oh my gosh, there is no real before. I was in high school. Um, so to me before I've always been a worker though. So I did normal jobs. I tutored, I worked at an ice cream shop. Um, I always had multiple jobs at one time. So while I did like a steady ice cream job, I tutored on the side. I nannied, I worked for a production company. I worked seasonally at Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, let me think I worked at a um, an Asian restaurant. Um, I worked so many different places. Um, it's like wild to think about before, but I've always been like a worker bee. And my parents always say like, we never told you, you had to get a job. But I started at like 15 years old, like babysitting, nannying, um, and tutoring. And that's like, and I just loved being independent and like, not having to rely on anybody for income. And so I, that started very early on. And now that I'm like saying this out loud, I'm like reflecting, I'm like, Oh, it makes sense why I like what I do. Um, right. I've always liked being independent in that way. Now so yes. Wow. I should have probably started with what is it that you didn't do? <laughs> <laughs> I know literally like I always was just trying to make money on the side, you know, do little things, um, whatever I could to make a little cash and have some extra cash on me. No, that's amazing. And and that epic absolutely has, you know, I mean, we see that all the time. Right. So high school, you know, side hustles constantly since you were 15 and after you graduate high school kind of transition there. I mean, so where did you go after that? Yeah. So I was in leadership in high school. I was on my ASB there and I had an amazing, amazing teacher. Um, and she knew that I was going to community college. I was going to Harbor community college, not Harvard. <laughs> I tend to think of that. Um, no, Harbor Community College, and it's actually a beautiful campus, like very modern and new, and she knew I was going there, and she said, hey, one of my really good friends is, um, they're looking for an assistant, and, and they're a real estate team local, and I was like, real estate? Like, huh, cool, like, that sounds really fun, you know, an assistant, okay, great, I can learn a lot, and I went in, um, and, he, and she was like, you know, wear like business casual. And I was like, business casual. Like I don't own slacks. Like I have jean shorts, tank tops. And like, you know, so I had to, I like went to Marshall's and like bought little slacks. I bought a little button down shirt and little flats. And like, I remember I was like, okay, like this is my business casual outfit. I walked in and I met Gordon Inman, um, and I sat down and interviewed with him and his team at the time. And um, I just remember I'm like, oh, like everyone's kind of like coming up to Gordon, like 
he's the boss man. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I'm sitting with the boss. Mm-hmm. So um, I was like, I am way over my head in this. Like I have zero experience. Like I have no business experience, but at the time they were really looking for like a young person to kind of mold their mind and kind of, you know, more like a lower level assistant. That's what they needed. And so it was perfect. Like it was a win-win for, for them too. And so, you know, Gordon just explained, like, you work hard in this business, like you show up every day. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, well, I'm just going to college. Like, I'm like, okay, like, you know, I'm just trying to make a little money while I go to college. Like, can you work with my schedule here? Like I'm going to school and I was able to, I was always really strategic with my school schedule. I make it like Mondays and Wednesdays. And I'd be at school from like 8 AM to sometimes like 10 o'clock PM, just so I could work Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. So I remember my days were so full just to have this job. And my parents would be like, you're coming home at like 11 by the time you get home. Like, you know, like, why are you doing this? I'm like, I don't know. I thrive on the chaos. I like thrive on being busy. Um, But yeah, it's kind of the nutshell of me, (laughs) the long story. No, that's amazing. I think, I I mean, I knew high school, college. I, and when I met you, you were just graduating high school and and at that point, you were already an assistant. So I didn't know the whole back end of, you know, you continue on to college. I knew you went yes. to college, but I didn't know how that transition, you know, was. So that's crazy. Um, so now college is happening Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you now are an assistant to Gordon and the team. Um, how did that kind of transpired, you know, to you? Because at that point, you didn't have your license yet, correct? I wasn't even licensed. Correct. So I in the office doing just marketing. Um, I would uh, just true administrative stuff, kind of like the a, a TC, like lower version, but like then doing marketing. And so I remember like they handed me one of their um, brochures and it was like, looked like it was from the nineties. Like, <laughs> like the design was literally probably 20 years old. Like granted it was like, beautiful content. And like, so Gordon was very innovative in marketing. He's always been that way. Like he always talks about when he started his companies, like how he just would take full page ads in the newspapers. And like, and so he always is like very pro marketing and like spend the money, like do what we have to do to keep our name and our branding. And so they gave me a lot of rain. It was like, here's our budget. Like we have a healthy budget. Like what, what should we do with it, Nicole? And I was like, well, number one, we need to update this brochure. That's from the (laughs) like, and I was like, and we need a bigger online presence. Like we do a lot of print, but we really do need to get more of that online presence. And so we started a new website. We, um, we updated all of our marketing pieces just to be a little more modern. Um, he had good systems in place, like monthly newsletter to Rolling Hills, um, all those things. It was consistent, but it just needed a little flair. So that's what I really came in and did for the first like four years there was truly just beefing up the marketing for the team. And I learned a lot because all day, every day I was analyzing what we're doing. What are we getting a return on? And it was really cool for me as like a young student in college going as a communications major and marketing minor to see, oh, they would get a phone call and be like, hey, we got your brochure. You know, we would like to interview with you to list our home. And I'm like, my God, this works. Mm -hmm. So that was really incredible for me to see just as the assistant. I'm like, wow, like this works. And then um, down the road, they're like, get your license, get your license, get your license. I'm like, okay. So I think the year I was graduating, um, I got my license and I was able to kind of step it up with them. I could do open houses. So I started doing all their open houses. Um, I started going with them to brokers open, assisting them when they needed me, you know, show going on showings with them and just really like diving in, having more access, more trust. Like at that point, they trusted me 
right. you know, Gordon trusted me with basically everything, you know, I just, I had access to everything for the team. So it was really an amazing um, place for me. I'm very, very blessed the way I started. It's all like a flow. It was never like I had to make, like, I'm going to do this. It was like things kind of naturally fell in place. Mm-hmm. That was very, very rare in real estate. You know, it's right. a lot of self-motivation, like, which was the case, but I had a lot of, it was flowed well. Correct. No, I agree. I agree. So got your license. And so fast forward, you are now actually a business partner in the Inman team. I mean, let's talk about that. Like, how did that feel? I mean, you're working the hills, you're all over the place. And not just that, the Inman team is huge. I, you know, y- y'all are pretty well known within the community and within our market share. Yeah. Um, it's really neat to see your name and Gordon's name on park benches and bus <laughs> benches, um, which by the way, marketing was on point, I have to admit. Um, but yeah, so, you know, kind of, I mean, how did you become, uh, uh, you know, from high yeah. school into a business partner and running a, such a successful team right now? Well, thank you, Mary. We work really, really hard um, to maintain that. It doesn't come easy. You know, we're in a crazy market right now. So, um, but anyways, we our team went through a major transition at one point. I think it was like 2018. And that's where there was this opening. And, you know, I was really nervous when this was happening. I didn't like the shakeup. I was like, this is not fun for me. Like, you know, there's a transition here, but Gordon, we, we had transactions to do. And so I just started filling in the gap and I just started, Hey, we had like, at the time we were really had a major lot of business. I think we had six or seven escrows, um, and stuff going phone calls still going. And so Gordon just gave me a lot of rain at that point. And I, and he kind of, I think could see, wow, like Nicole is stepping up Mm -hmm. Um, and he, I'm very thankful for this. He didn't look elsewhere. He looked right in front of him and saw that I was like, pick me, (laughs) I'm ready. Like, and I felt really confident because they gave me the tools. They taught me everything. I knew every single escrow already happening. I knew all the marketing. So he just was like, Nicole, here, here's your golden platter. And I was like, okay, like, let's do this. And he's like, well, let's talk about a partnership. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I think I went home to my husband and um, we're newly married. And I was like, he wants me to be like his partner. Like, what does that even mean? You know, what is that going to mean for me? Like, I'm going to be full, full time. Like, this is my life. My income's going to be based on what? <laughs> I don't know. And my husband's like, Nicole, shush. Like, stop. <laughs> You're going to go tomorrow. You're going to tell him, you know, this is what you would like as a partnership. And we wrote it out together. And because he asked me to present him something. And I went and he said, this looks great. Let's do it. And like, I think we hugged it out and it was like very much like a handshake. Like, we love handshake. Her, like, <laughs> yeah, like it was just, um, for him, it was no big deal for me. It was like, my world was like, wow. Like it changed drastically. Mm-hmm. And that year, I think I made the most money I've ever made my entire life. Um, um, you know, major, that was, I think our team did the best we've ever done. I think even Gordon himself, you know, so it was like, wow, like we were capable of so much together. And the next year we did again, we had an amazing, amazing year together. Uh, and so we just keep that ball rolling as best as we can together. I love that. No, thank you. So what have you done consistently, or at least you and Gordon as a team um, and business partners, what have you done consistently that you noticed that you got such a high ROI on? You know, um, Gordon's always like simplify things. And I've always taken that like, don't overcomplicate it. And so we keep our marketing pretty simple. And yes, we're always trying to do the new and the best things, but the best has been print for us, print advertising and being very consistent with that. Um, A lot of the areas that we target tend to be more established people, more middle-aged plus. 
And so they are reading the mail coming through. And so for us, um, that, that is what really has worked for us is the print advertising mm -hmm. um, because Gordon's name is very much established and, you know, I'm getting there slowly, but Gordon's name really does have people see, Oh, Gordon, I know him. I know him. And it just keeps coming in their mailbox. So that I think is what has given us the biggest return. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. So kind of, you know, we got the history. We, we understand that all the pivoting moment for you, your business and your life. Um, what is, I, I guess the right question is what's gonna, what will we see out of the Inman team in 2024? I know I I'm actually doing every year. I do like my own personal business planning and I set my own goals and I think something that I've never done is like business coaching. And I may, I think that's something I would like because we are in like the slower market. And I think this is a time where you kind of go internal and you're like, okay, what can I do differently? What can I invest in myself? What can I learn more about this business and just kind of expand our business? And so business coaching is something I, I thought I would never do. I didn't really believe in it, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, but it is something that I'm going to do this year. I put it on my goal list. Um, I would like some of that accountability and some of that just to bounce off like what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. And I think it's a really, it's almost like a therapy session, but for your business, Absolutely, that's what I need at this point in I my career. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Now let's kind of talk about some of the meats and the potatoes. So 2024 sounds like you got it locked in. As of right now, because we are in a shifting market, what are you doing to lead gen and to, aside from your SOI, aside from word of mouth and obviously um, the Inman team's weight in itself, uh, outside of that, what are you currently working on to ensure that, you know, you're drumming up new businesses and new clients? Yes. So I've noticed a lot of our clients or the buyers that I'm speaking to, they're very much like have felt like on like a pause. And that's why we see kind of that slowdown. They're all assessing the market. They're all assessing the interest rates, the pricing. And so um, it's really simple for me. I just stay in touch with them because the moment you stop is where they pivot or you lose them or they find out their friends, mother's cousins a realtor and start right. talking so it's all about just communication in my opinion and so that's really what I do I just stay in touch with everyone um, we do an email newsletter that we send to our database and some of the best marketers say to do that just email um, on a weekly basis on a monthly basis and it's a way to really connect with people but to make it really personal so I am working on like more of like a personal email that goes out to my clients and that just kind of stays in touch with Olivia, <laughs> stays in touch with the market and kind of more like, instead of just like, here's this like recipe or like interest rates are high. It goes into like something really like valuable that they can take away. Mm -hmm. Olivia, let me help you out here. Uh, <laughs> she so, can talk to her. Yes. So I just keep it really basic. It's about communication at this point. Um, and I think that's what like I'm focusing on is touching my database, going through it, organizing it, cleaning it up right now and um, texting people um, and getting them excited for next year and to like commit to working with me. Absolutely. No, I love that. Thank you. And, you know, and that's a lot of the challenges that's currently happening is it's, you know, we're not staying in touch with our clients enough, but it sounds like you got that dialed in and down pat. Um, now you've hit a certain caliber of, you know, in your business, you still do the basics. I mean, I do see you, you still do open houses. You're, you know, you're still touching your database. Um, you know, so kind of go through what's a day, a, a business day look like for you? Like, what is your schedule and how do you plan out your day? Obviously, you are, you know, you're a mom, you're running a multi-million dollar business as well, you know, and you're, you're very involved in the office. Um, 
And those of you that don't know, I mean, Nicole, you know, she's on our AOC. She's very, very involved. We, you know, we brainstorms quite often. She's also a mentor. So, I mean, all this is a lot. You, you hit every facet in our office. How do you stay organized? Oh, yeah. Organization is like um, the key for me because I like, I'm a very chaotic, like my brain's constantly going, like I'm thinking about other things. The brain doesn't shut off. So mm -hmm. I will naturally forget things. So I'm a list person and I write my list down like to the very basic, like pad and paper style. Like I constantly have my pad of paper with like my to-do list. So that's like the most basic thing I do. But then I live on like my Google calendar. So my Google calendar, I put everything in there. So like, let's say I'm like, oh, I need to call so-and-so. I put that in my calendar at a certain time. Um, and that goes to every task basically that like is on my mind. Um, so my calendar num is like number one, that's my bestie. And then my notepad, <laughs> pen and paper um, is really how I stay organized. And then I do use like KW command to like have my database. Um, and then I do, I'm, I like things really basic. So I use Excel spreadsheets. So everything's really just on an Excel spreadsheet as well. Um, so I try to keep it like, there she is. <laughs> um, I try to keep it really simple because um, I want to be able to access the stuff from anywhere. Um, so that's my organization is like just writing everything down, saying in my account, I tell everybody like, use your calendar, use your phone calendar it's so easy like you can put tasks and put notes um so that's what I do yeah no I love it so I do want to touch on something real quick on your open houses yes. when you when you when you run an open house you run it on a very high level can you walk us through that a little bit what is your from a to z the moment you're you set that calendar and say I'm going to hold this open house right on a brand new property um what does that look like for you yeah. I mean, there's so much you can do, but again, like I tend to keep things pretty simple. I don't, for me, it's about doing the open house and like, what's the goal of an open house to get clients. Yeah. So like, um, and, and, you know, if you're starting out like, okay, great. Like put out all the stops, you know, do all the things door knock before send invites to the neighborhood. Um, you know, do all those things. And like, I do, I do like to do all of that as well for, you know, some bigger open houses. Um, but usually I tend to keep it pretty simple. Just, just doing it for me is like the opportunity. So right. being there showing up, um, get there early, put your signs out, all the simple stuff. I usually just like, I have a whole spread out, um, you know, of things, um, like, um, I'm mentoring, um, Julie and we did an open house and, um, we did, um, hand sanitizers, like with business cards on them, which was really fun and really cute. And people like loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so people take your business card along with the hand sanitizer. You could do really fun things like that, but really for me, just showing up at the open house, being prepared, knowing the inventory around there, I print, um, pretty much like active listings in the area, comparables, um, solds. I print all that. So I have it ready because people are going to ask. Right. I also like to have a list of all the other properties on open house. Maybe like if I'm doing Palos Verdes, like in Palos Verdes and it has, I make it really nice. So it has all my contact information on there. And so it seems like a lot of people coming in, they love that. And it has my information on there and it's like a good touch subject because I'm talking about them. Hey, are you looking at any other open houses today? You know, what are you looking at? They're like, you know, here's the list. Like, if you want me to show it to you after, like, you know, and for me, it's about the conversations and kind of training on that. Um, the worst thing you can do is just let somebody come by and, Hey, take a look around. Like, you know, at, let me know if you have any questions and then they come back and then they're out the door. You know, right. you do want to have some kind of touch, like, you know, tell me a little bit about what you're looking for. And then I think the key is going one step further and trying to play off of what they're looking for and say, well, look, you know, there's a couple of agents in my office. I've heard them talking about some properties similar. 
you know, can I get your information? I would love to um, share it with you what, as soon as I'm able to. And right. they're like, oh yeah, like, you know, we'd love that. Okay, like who's your agent? Are you working with someone? No, I'm not. Okay, fantastic. Well, would you be open to meeting at some point? I'd love to sit down with you, talk about what I do. So for me, it's about the conversation more than anything. You can print everything out and do all the fun things, but the conversation is the key. Okay. Um, I print out, um, I just, I actually took this from some, so what I do is I look at what the top, top, my like inspirational agents are doing. And a lot of them I've become very close friends with through the networking and I see what they're doing and I see some of their marketing and, um, and it's a lot about branding. So right. on the table, they'll have an information page about what they do, what they offer, their team, like really beautiful pieces that people can take. And so that's something I'd like to implement, you know, just kind of that branding um, information. And then the next one says, has their testimonials and all these people saying how amazing they are and their five-star reviews. And then on the back, it talks about, you know, their full service, they do staging, whatever. Yeah. So that's something I, I'm going to be implementing is some marketing pieces that are more branding. I love that. Thank you. Well, as we're wrapping things up, uh, what would be your advice to the agents that are listening right now? Okay. Um, it's a very tough time right now to start. That's a given. We all know that, but, um, you, but you do have to still show up. Even if you feel like there's nothing to do, there is so much to do. Um, rely on your mentors. So show up and create a schedule. So I think the best thing you could do is if maybe you're working another job right now, which is amazing, like keep that job, but then make a schedule. Say Mondays, Wednesdays for our meetings, you're going to be in the office. The best thing you can do is network. Um, been doing this like what I think this is like year 13 um, at the end of the year will be year 13 and I've gotten to know all the agents the top top agents like the agents that I like I'm like wow like they are 100 million dollars in sales 150 200 million dollars in sales I have networked with them and become friends with them. Mm -hmm. they, I walk into the broker, their brokers open and they're like, oh, hey, Nicole, thank you so much for coming. Right. They love support. And what that, what that does is I can have little conversations with them. I walk in and say, oh, you know, what do you think about that listing? It's kind of overpriced. Like, what's your opinion? They give me their opinions and insights and they tend to open that door for um, interesting information. Oh, but I heard this off market one's coming, you know, so-and-so has, and I'm like, Oh, really? Oh, okay, great. I'm going to go call that person. So networking to me is so important in this business. Um, so I'd be going to all the brokers opens, um, in your sphere, in your area that you want to focus on. And I'd be making a schedule. I'm going to be in the office Monday, Wednesday, set a plan of what you're going to work on, work on database, um, which is a never ending task, by the way. So if you think you don't have anything to do, you do your database needs work constantly. Um, start working on an email newsletter. Emails are free. Yep. Do the free things. Emails are mostly free sending, you know, you can send an email to anybody for free finding emails, you, you know, use your resources to get the free versions um, and then down the road, maybe consider buying or whatever, but start an email newsletter um, and just start with your network, like a weekly update and make it spend time on it. Don't put a cookie recipe, read some amazing articles, ask your mentors what they read and read what they're reading, their content and take some pieces, some nuggets and put it in your own words and your own um explanations. Um, so I, that's what I would do to start. And then social media, num like spend, you got to do it. Yeah. You got to put yourself out there on social media. It's free. <laughs> you don't need to be paying anybody to do your videos, take your iPhone and video and story and share what you're doing in real estate. Um, that's for sure. For sure. 
Yep, absolutely. Well, this is amazing. Thank you so, so much. Hi, Miss Olivia. Um, Nicole, thank you for your time. Again, you know, um, we're, we're just so grateful to be in business with you. And, you know, I, I'm super grateful to call you a friend and a sister as well. Aww. Thank you for being Love here. You. A little early. Uh, <laughs> but we're happy that you're here. I hope oh. that everyone else has definitely gotten uh, at least several nuggets because I know I did. Um, we really do appreciate you. Oh my gosh, she's so happy. I know. I <laughs> She's like, what's going on? I know. Um, and, you know, if I don't get to see all of you, uh, you know, today, then have a happy holiday. Have a great weekend. Merry Christmas, everyone. And um, y'all are doing amazing. So keep it all up. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. And Happy New Year. 2024 is going to be an amazing year. Absolutely. A pivotal year, I think, for a lot of people. And it's a new start. So whatever you're doing or last, you know, this last year, maybe it was a tougher year for you. You can make a change, you know, just start doing the things. So lean on your TL, lean on your staff um, and just happy holidays to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>